Hello everyone, and welcome to the first ever Skadcast narrative campaign of faith and fate. This is a campaign that's going to see me playing the Black Templars against John, who will be playing Thousand Sons and Zinch Demons. We will be using the Wars of Faith Crusade campaign pack from Vigilus Alone, which is a supplement that was released by Games Workshop. We're basically following that campaign from start to finish. The campaign will be in three to four stages of three games each. We'll play a couple of Crusade combat patrols, then some Incursion, then Strike Force, and it will ultimately culminate in an onslaught game, a large epic clash between the forces of the faithful, the Black Templars, and the forces of change and chaos, the Zinch, Demons, and Thousand Sons. I hope you enjoy this game. It is brought to you thanks to the patrons, the Denizen community, and the YouTube members. So make sure you check all the links down below. But without further ado, let's dive in to a campaign. Enjoy! The Dark Tier. Hello and welcome to this narrative campaign. A war of faith fought between the forces of Zinch, the cultists, the demons, the heretic Astartes, and the forces of the Black Templars along the fringe of the Denorian system. Near the Nakmund Rift, we are fighting over this system. The forces of chaos and the forces of the Black Templars will be facing off for control of Dontoria, Stormvol, and Hearthlack. This campaign will see the fate of three locations on this system that might teeter between chaos or stay with the light of the Emperor. Our first major conflict location is Dontoria, the Hive City that is ripe with Imperial and majestic icons of the faith to the God Emperor. The next is Stormvol. Riddled with industrial works, Stormvol suffers from tectonic shifts that shake the ground underneath this location. And lastly, Hartlack, the moon on the planet, the thick jungle moon where the fake atmosphere and lush vegetation that had been put in place for the pleasure of the elite of the system now falls prey to the machinations of chaos. The war will be fought. Follow our games as John and I, Marshal Augustine, and the Rainbow Marines fight for the control of the system. Our first battle today takes us to the depths of Don Thoria, a hive city, where the forces of Chaos and the Black Templars will face off in the first battle of this war of faith. Welcome to mission number one, covert engagement. Aided by the faithful, the Zinch have successfully snuck a small but potent force into the heartland of the enemy's faith to where an idol has been raised in secret to your own gods. Strike now and prove their might as the Black Templars and the Thousand Sons fight in this first battle over the hive city of Dontoria. For this mission, we're using the Crusade mission pack, the Wars of Faith. Mission one of our campaign is covert engagement. We have two idols on the table. We're trying to undermine their faith and take the objectives. This is the deployment. On the one side, the forces of Zinch have placed their idol next to their objective, a secret hatch as to where the cultists, the lambs, have crawled out from. The Imperials on the other side, the Black Templars, defending the holy statues of Imperial might against the enemy. During the battle, supplies such as the ammunition dump and this secret tech bomb are things that the forces will be fighting over, as well as this beep boop telegraph homer, teleport homer thingy, together with the hatch in the back. 
Enemy units within range of your idol will be minus one leadership. And if you control an objective marker at the end of your command phase, it remains under your control, even if there are no models in range of it until the enemy takes it away. At the start of the first battle round, each army will select a paragon to lead their army into battle. At the end of each command phase, you will score five points for holding one objective. You will score five more if you hold two or more objectives. And if you score have more than your opponent, you will score an additional five points for a maximum of 15 points per battle round. At the end of the battle, you will score 30 victory points if you kill your opponent's paragon. And a lot is at stake as the victor bonus. The victor will select one unit from their army within range of an objective marker they control, and that unit will gain three additional experience. And if the victor controls more objective markers than their opponent, then their crusade force will gain D3 more belief points to use in the War of Faith. For this mission, the Black Templars have sent Marshal Augustine himself into combat. They've sent ancient brother Alexandra with his banner of renown. They have sent Sigismund's Light, the infiltrator squad, seeking the cultists at every turn, and they have sent Holy Retribution, the Black Templar's crusade squad. The prophesied sons have sent in Ogma, the sorcerer, with the Dream Marines, led by prophecy. The Rubrikai following them along, and as with any good followers, the little lambs have come along. The Thousand Sons have deployed with the Rainbow Marines, the Sorcerer, the Rubrique, and the little lambs in the back there. The Infiltrators have moved up to secure the explosive, while the rest of the Crusaders are ready to move and get into position to support and save the idol from desecration. The Black Templars did vow to uh, suffer not the unclean to live, so in combat they will automatically wound the enemy on sixes to hit. And as for our agendas, the Black Templars' agenda is to honor the standard, planting this mighty standard of the Ninth Crusade, next to the center of the battlefield and surrounding it against all odds while the forces of chaos have chosen to bind their souls trying to kill the leaders of the faith to bring forth the demons of chaos let's see who goes first okay the black templars roll a six Ooh, the black templars sally forth as they howl insults Death to the traitor, the heretic, and the mutant. Fury for the emperor. Charge forward, brothers. I have selected Marshal Augustine to be the paragon for this battle. At the start of the command phase, I gain control of this objective over here, but not that one. The large crusader squad through the craters will advance. I'm just going to move forward. They are going to remain in the crater and behind this wall to gain some cover. But... The Crusader squad will advance, singing their praises to the Emperor as they go forward. Ancient Brother Alexandra and Marshal Augustine have moved up towards the idol, ready to protect it against all enemies. The Phobos Marines, having secured the bomb location, will be using oh, the stratagem to slink back into the shadows, guerrilla tactics. They will be in strategic reserve. With that initial gambit, the Space Marines end their first turn, having secured the bomb, having moved into the location to take advantage of their idol and plant their banner next turn. In the command phase, the rampant corruption will mean that uh, John gets to pick one of my units to take a mortal wound and suffer minus two to their leadership. You will be devastated and have your faith shaken, large unit. Okay, so on a five up, because of my holy faith in the Emperor, ha <laughs> ha, I ignore the mortal wound, but they are minus two leadership. The Dream Terminator Marines move forward towards the enemy. Rubrique with their flamers will be advancing towards the icon. And there's an earthquake that shatters the world. <laughs> the little lambs will move. Ooh, 
And that's probably going to go through a crater or potentially, yeah, there they go. Right through the crater. I like it. Getting up on the board, threatening the bomb that the infiltrators had secured. Sneaky cultist. Ogma himself advancing forward. There you have it. And moving on to the psychic phase. Where are the lambs? Nobody knows. The Dream Marines will cast Press Edge. Okay, plus one to hit. Uh, it goes off. They do. Rubricry will cast Pyrrhic Flux. Nice. Goes off. Ogma. Will cast the Glamour of Zinch on the little lambs. Ooh, giving them an invulnerable save. Very nice. Oh, minus one to hit. That does not go off. Mm -hmm. So I've used my five Cabal points to have that go off instead. Right. Plus one to the cast, which will make it a six. So Glamour goes off on the lambs. And we will cast a smite at the... The Paragon ability from Ogma increases his psychic powers by six inches, allowing him to smite the Crusaders from 24 inches away. And it goes off on a five. And it also, because of the idol, get an additional mortal wound to this, so D3 plus one. That is three mortal wounds. Hey, faithful Black Templars. Jimmy and Bob are both going to take <laughs> the neophytes. Five ups. Only one mortal wound is sustained as my faith holds true. The Dream Marines will shoot their bolters and uh, Soul Reaper cannon into the Crusaders. Right. Well, except for the Reaper chain cannon. But they are precise, so plus one to hit. There. On fours, that is four at AP2. So I have a, a Primaris Neophyte. He has a four up save. Minus one to your AP for Armor Contempt. Makes it a minus one. Mm -hmm. And he's in a Crater for a three up save. So four ups. And if uh, Billy, then Bob will take saves. So four ups for both of them. Okay, one dies, one takes a wound. You kill Billy. And next, Bob. Billy and Bob. The Soul Reaper. Do, 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 do. Hand on twos. Oh, very nice. Breeze to wound. That's three. Ooh, three. The Soul Reaper cannon is AP minus three. That means Billy goes to a five up. And then I will go to Brother Frank. I think his name is Frank. But uh, he's got a better save. So he'll have four ups. So <laughs> Bob, is it? Bob, yeah, four up for Bob. Oh, five up? No, he's dead. Then four ups for, for Brother Billy. Ooh. And he takes a wound with the Crusader squad. So you're saving themselves against most of that damage. That's it for the Terminators. So, Ogma shooting his bolter. I like it. Nope. And the Terminators have done some work. The Pyrrhic Flux Flamers are not in range to do anything as of yet. And the Black Templars have lost two out of ten casualties. They are leadership eight, nine, minus two is seven. On a six, they will fail morale. They do not. Good job. With that, it is the end of the first battle round as the forces clash. At the start of my next turn, so I go up to five command points again. John has four. I will hold one objective. I will hold two objectives. And I will hold more objectives. So I will get a 15 on my primary objective mission as we move into turn number two. Marshal Augustine kneeling at the altar of the Emperor's heroes. He will do make an offering. So it's an action that he can do it's, and finish at the end of the movement phase. So he can't move. However, then I get to pick one of the cool abilities that the icon has. One of which is give my units transhuman within six inches of it. So I'm going to make him kneel and pray to the Emperor for holy intervention. And then because of the crater, they only get to move like their four inches. Which is, which is, which is, there they go. They're going to try and make a long bomb charge into a bunch of Terminators, I, I, I believe, I presume. I have this sinking feeling that that's something that might happen, hopefully. The Ancient is going to do the action plant the standard. He's within six inches of the center of the table. And he's also now within range of an objective marker. Last turn, because of my banner points, I do get a few banner points, as the banner itself will gain renown in this campaign. I'm planting the standard, which um, I do now. I, last turn I got one point for my ancient standards tally.
because I was within range of an objective that I controlled, and I will be once again within three, giving him another point at the end of this turn, at the end of the battle round, if he's still alive as well. At the end of my movement phase, I will select Stalwart Defenders for the Paragon to pray to the idol. So my units, all infantry units within idle range, six inches of that standard will gain transhuman. The infiltrator unit arrives from the shadows, just making sure they're out of line of sight of things that could shoot them, but also staying within range of the banner and within range of my idol to keep them alive for next turn. The Crusader squad will fire into the Terminators. I have five heavy bolt pistols. Uh, minus one for hitting, shooting into the dents, hitting on fours. Rolling ones, thank you, my lord. Winning on fours. <gasps> one at AP, nothing. Of armor contempt. Two regular neophyte pistols. Ooh, they both hit. And one wound. Ha, ah, sad. And a pyro blaster. Ooh, six hits. <laughs> it's now AP two, but all this dust and armor contempt, don't care. <laughs> is, it is strength six though, I think. Something like that. Well, let's see. Ooh, three saves. Very nice. Take some damage. Oh, I got one through. Yes. With that, I am now going to declare a charge with the Crusader squad. I need a. I need to roll a nine to get into those Terminators. Okay. Um, do you want to Overwatch? Yes. You yes, do. you do. Okay. The Terminator sergeant has the Incandium. It's a flamer relic. Yes. It's kind of like a pyro blaster, but has. Oh no. It's just four to wound because of the little transhuman. That's going to be four, four wounds. AP two, not three. So it is minus one. So it'd be AP one. So Mr. Brother, and then I'll do the neophytes. So Mr. Brother on fours. Nope, he goes down. And then one neophyte uh, survives with a wound. If anything, these Crusader squads are quite durable and tough. And all the bolters. And fours, nothing there. Nothing there. Well, the Flamer did take one down. Do the Crusaders make it across the field to face the heretics in, in single combat? They do. they do! Good job! <laughs> then they're gonna get flamed next turn. But good job! Because of the battle zone we are in, Dontoria, John was able to lower my leadership and do mortals across the table at me. I get to pick once per battle round to reroll hits and wounds against a unit that's within six inches of me, either in shooting or in combat. So I will do burning conviction on my Crusader squad, giving them reroll hits and wounds against the traitors. The Crusader squad has piled in ready to fight them. Got two neophytes and two crusaders with chain swords. So I get reroll hits and wounds and sixes to hit will automatically wound because of my vow. Ooh, very nice. We have 12, but they're only AP one because of the fact that I'm not in assault doctrine. Not that it matters, just two of saves <laughs> because they are rubric terminators. At All least one dust. is wounded. All is dust. Okay. Oh, they pass every single save. Three attacks from the mighty Power Fist. Ooh, one auto wound. Very nice. That's it. Just one save there. That is AP3, so it'll be AP2. So it's a four. Ooh. Yeah, because of armor contempt. But no all is dust here. He is okay. And last but not least, my sword brethren. Leading by example. He should have probably gone first, you know, to lead by example. He hits mm. auto wounds with that one. Very nice. And wounding on threes. That's two saves at four ups. Two four up saves. Oh, they are completely okay. The charge from the Black Templars falls short. As now, it is time for the Terminators to fight back. I will be spending two command points to transhuman them. <laughs> to try and keep them alive after that fiasco of a combat phase. Uh oh. Uh oh. Who's the hit? That's right. Terminator's hitting. Forced to wound for transhuman. Okay, and these are decent AP. Wow, that was a fantastic roll. Look at that. These are two damage each from the Kopeshes. So six is on the Neophytes. <gasps> go, go, Gadget Neophyte. Nice. No, two Neophytes go down. And then five pluses for the next six attacks. Will the Marines survive or will they all die? I lose four more of the mighty... Emperor's Heroes, so two Neophytes, four more go down. That will only leave the Sword Brother alive 
against the tide of the enemy. Well then, the Sword Brothers alone against the enemy. I will spend two command points to keep him in combat, heroically, once per game. I'm just gonna pick one unit, boop. So he's not gonna run anywhere. And it is now the end of the turn. I, the banner will get one point for being in range of the objective. We'll get one point for doing the action of planting the banner. So he's up to three banner points. And the infiltrators are wholly within six inches of the banner. So they get one experience for my agenda. The Thousand Sons get five points for holding the little objective in the back. The little lambs moving forward through the ruins. The Sorcerer in Terminator Armor is going to kneel at the altar and make an offering. The Rubrikai just advance six inches with their flamers, ready to get up into the opponents, into, like, my lines. Look at them go. They're going to come and try and challenge Marshal Augustine and everybody else. And that's it for the movement phase. Now we move into the psychic phase as well. The Dream Marines will use... Presage on the cultists. Very cool. Uh, needing a seven. Needing a seven. The idol allows them to get a command point. They go up to five command points because of rolling the unmodified nine. One of my units will take a mortal and suffer minus two leadership. In uh, yes, okay, yeah. So the sword brother, he does take a mortal wound. The sorcerer is going to cast glamour and weaver on the little lambs. All right, Glamour. Does not go off. I can reroll all psychic tests because cool. he knelt at the altar. He did. There you go. Seven. Mm -hmm. They hold. They have a four up and one. Ooh, room. good old invincible cultists. Rakai will try for Pyrrhic Flux. Very nice. It goes off. Using metaphysical focus. Dream Marines will cast a smite. It will cast a smite to try and smote the sword brethren off of them. It will go off, and that's where I will use my Abhor the Witch stratagem to try and stop it on a four plus. Will his holy piousness save him? No, he will take D3 mortal wounds for three, and he will go down. The sword brethren has been fallen. With that, into the shooting phase. The Rubrikai will try and scorch the Phobos fellas. Okay, very nice. Four D6 hits. Nice. Thanks to my idol, it is on a four plus. Okay, a couple of hits in there. Seven at AP2, bringing my save up to a four plus. Oh, very nice. Three go through, one gets ignored because of the helix, and one will go down. The little pistols are going to shoot into the Phobos Marines as well, hitting on threes because of presage. Wounding on fives with their little las guns. Ooh, very nice. That's five <laughs> saves. Go, little lambs, on threes to save the Marines, and my power armor holds true. With that, it is the end of the turn. Everything else being protected and or behind line of sight. So, with that, we go into the Black Templar's third turn, now into the Assault Doctrine. The banner, Marshal Augustine, has moved behind a wall. He's going to charge a bunch of flamers from out of line of sight to try and uh, <laughs> kill some flamers, do something to try and uh, deal with the enemy, while the Phobos Marines and the banner are trying to take out the Little Lambs to uh, attempt to. I am going to do the action with the banner to try and get some more experience because it's a whole campaign we have to worry about, not just one battle. I am going to go ahead and use the reroll all hits and all wounds. Actually, I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to do that probably in combat. I'm just going to use the reroll ones to hit from the captain, but they're hitting on threes, shooting into you, and uh, wounding on... No, fours to hit, and then... Wounding on threes. Hitting on fours, six is auto wound because I am special. And I've got special bolters. So that's three saves into the little lambs. Will the little lambs take some damage? Ooh, two of them. 
I wish you would have failed those against the Terminators, John. But two of them <laughs> will go down. A heavy bolt pistol from my Marshall will fire into Little Lambs as well. Missing, but he does get to reroll one hit roll and one wound roll because of his Paragon ability. And one rune roll as well. Good. That is one save from a bolt pistol to the face. Oh, no. Excellent. Good job, Marshal Augustine. <laughs> Marshal Augustine charging the flux, guys. Oh, he angry. He's very angry. Good job, Marshal Augustine. You got this. The Phobos Marines will charge in to the little lambs. Overwatch. Overwatching. Because you have CP to burn, apparently. This is a hit. From the little lambs. Go, little lambs. No, don't do it, little lambs. Don't do it. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, do they? No, they do not. Okay, and they, oh, look at that. Charging him, gonna make sure they're all within, wholly within six inches of the banner, however. Okay, Marshal Augustine, let's see what you got. I have six attacks from Marshal Augustine into the Rubric Marines with his master crafted power sword. And he gets to reroll one hit roll because he's a paragon. Oh, he missed. Wounding on threes against the traitors and rerolling one wound roll. So that's three at AP four, which will be AP three. So sixes because of armor of contempt. Ooh. And with two damage each, he lays low three of the traitors. Hey, little lambs are interrupting, trying to fight <laughs> the Phobos Marines. This uh. is amazing. They're just, look at them go. There's the happy little cultists trying very hard to kill giant space marines. Bah. Thanks to Presage hitting on threes against the Phobos marines. Winning on fives against the mighty space marines. Oh, two go through. Three up saves. And the helix allows me to ignore one failed save. Uh. Good job. And now with burning conviction, I will reroll hits and wounds against you. Many attacks. Hitting on fours, because you are minus one to hit, or to be hit. Very nice, with burning conviction. Excellent. Uh, that's four auto wounds. Because of, uh, oh, and I forgot to do that with the marshal. Uh, that's a shame. And threes to wound, but re-rolling. Excellent. Oh. That'll be nine saves into the cultists. Strong little lambs. <laughs> Heretics and traitors. Oh, what? Too good. What just happened? I don't understand. <laughs> well, that's not what I expected at all, but that's okay. Four up invul save because of uh, Weaver of Fates. <laughs> Apparently, they're fated for greater things, says the inch. Two Marshal Augustine. Three, four, one. Ooh. And is it AP on that? Nope. Okay, so it's fine. Threes. And on fours as well. Nope. Cool. That's for so with that, it is time to roll some morales. Because you have one command point left or zero? I have one command point left. You have one command point remaining. Okay. And they lost five of their number. Will they run away? <laughs> will, will they flee? Uh, no, no. Oh my goodness what is going on this is ridiculous and i love it hey, little lambs the heroes of this little crusade game the infiltration is being successful and john still has a giant turbinator unit and his sorcerer i'm running out of options but it is zinch turn number three end of the movement phase is nigh with the terminators moving forward to engage marshal augustine himself while over here we had the it's Thousand Sons Terminator Lord moving up to engage the Phobos and the Banner. You want them to suffer the leadership modifier and a yes. mortal wound. Does their faith and conviction? No, one of them will take a mortal. So we'll do the the casting of the plus one to hit. Okay. On to themselves. Yep. Plus one to hit on them. Glamour, Glamour of... Ooh, does not go off. No glamour this turn. No. Weaver of Fates needs a seven. That is also not going to happen. Oh, that's not going to happen either. And I you're going to make it happen. Okay. Who's getting the Weaver of Fates? The Little Lambs. Four up and vulnerable save again. Smite from... Oh, that is a smite. How many mortal wounds? That is two mortal wounds. My Relic Shield grants me a four up. 
feel no pain against mortals. He takes a single wound as the forces of chaos try and he's holding the line against everyone. Well, guys are gonna shoot pistols. Go nice. little lamb. I love it. They're gonna shoot. They don't have plus one to hit, no. So no. fours to hit this time. And wounding into the Phobos on fives, nothing. Now charges finally. <laughs> Okay. Ogma will come in. Ogma trying to get in with a five. Yes. He does indeed. He's gonna come punch the Phobos Marines. Very nice. Dream Marines. Oh, there they go. Into Marshal Augustine. The Dream Marines go four inches, which will make them in. Who do you like to fight first? I will take the, we are going to siphon some soul. Ah, very nice. I like it trying to get your agenda. And Marshal Augustine will imbued with transhuman physiology, transhuman physiology himself. I have four of them attacking and they have Kopeshes. So this is when I wish he would have brought Tannhauser's bones. Twos to hit because of Presage. Let's see if transhuman helps me this time. It did not last time. Oh, only four go five, five go through. Okay, I have four up in vulnerable saves. Will he survive this onslaught? No, he will take eight damage and die. Marshal Augustine has fallen to the Terminators, and it is now time for the uh, Tor Terminator Sorcerer Lord to fight the Phobos Marines. Four attacks with his Kopesh. Hitting on threes. Okay. Threes this time because... Mm -hmm. So five up. Oh, and I ignore the first failed thanks to my... Oh. I'm okay, and I'm fine. All four of them will fight you. They will use Burning Conviction to try and kill the little lambs. Charged me, so I got a whole bunch of attacks. Excellent. Good thing uh, minus... You have Weaver, so you're four up involved. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll keep it. Rerolling hits. Thank goodness. Excellent. And wounding on threes. And rerolling wounds. Oh, dear. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Four up saves. And four up saves. Be strong, little lambs. Yeah. <gasps> and one, how many? Two, three die. <laughs> four. Four. One is left alive. The sergeant stays, and they will just pile in like that. Little lamb sergeant gets to fight. Ha <laughs> ha! Hitting on fours. One hit. Wounding on a five. One wound. Does he bring down a marine? He oh. does not. Okay, morale test for the little lamb. Oh, you're gonna use it. They pass. Awesome, you're gonna automatically pass morale. Amazing. With that, it is the end of the battle round. You have killed my paragon. That's 30 points for killing my paragon Ooh. at the end of the game. So if I can't kill him, that'll be 30 points. That's gonna be hard to come back from. Almost impossible now. I was really hoping he'd survive. Battle round. I did the action for the banner. So he gets plus one to that. He's not within range of an objective that I control, but he is in range of an enemy unit. So he, I will get an additional point for my banner. With that, we're going to go ahead and move my banner up. And he's going to be within six inches of the center of the board. And he's going to plant the banner. <gasps> yeah, that's right. You better watch out. Uh, it's gonna, the heroic last stand of the banner. You can't ask for any other great um, part of that, which is gonna be great. Uh, all the pistols are gonna shoot that lone sergeant. I also got 10 points for holding two objectives. Okay, four pistols into your little lamb. Uh, three hits, two wounds. Four up and vulnerable. There you go. Will he live? He does, nicely done. And we're into combat, so you get to pick one to fight first. Um, oh, I will take the, I will take Ogma. I like it. Hit on threes. Go Kobesh. Okay. Needing threes. Miss, miss. No. Well, once again, use strength of conviction. <laughs> <laughs> this time though, I will be doing, uh, I will be doing um, one into your sergeant, everybody else into, and I'll be doing reroll hits and wounds into your captain. So the little, the little guy, you know, if, if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be, but that's one more save. He's either gonna pass or fail because he's a heroic little cultist of death little and lamb. destruction. Ah, uh, he's still alive. <laughs> Look at that. Good job, little cultist. Into the Terminator. Rerolling hits and wounds. I'm just gonna reroll everything. Try and fish for some sixes. And because they auto wound, which is kind of neat. 
Okay, so that'd be six saves at AP1, not that you care. Two ups into your sorcerer, and he takes a damage. Very nice. Then the little lamb gets to swing. Go, little lamb. Good job, little lamb. It's once. And he oh. also wounds, and it's okay. So with that, they will get an additional experience for being around the banner. Oh. And, <laughs> yep, and that's that. Once he lived, he would actually do something like this. Hooray. No, little lamb. Yes, okay, there you go. John will get 10 more points for holding two objectives as we move into Thousand Suns turn four. The Rubrikai are going to desecrate this idol. They're gonna try and move closer to the icon of the Emperor's Wrath. And they have now beep boop the beep boops <laughs> and the signal has gone silent. There you come on this side, there they go. Very nice. Dream Marines making their way towards the enemy. Love it. Morale, a uh, mortal wound there because of the disruption. One will go down. Boop. Weaver of Fates. Weaver of Fates. It goes off. It does. Little lamb. Nice. Hammer of Zinch. Goes off. Little lamb. Very nice. Fighting from the rubrics, uh, the... The Dream Marines. The Dream Marines. Goes off. D3 mortals. Three. So it's four mortal wounds because of the idol. Five up to ignore. I take three mortal wounds. Cabal points. Yep. To give me an additional D3. For one more. That he survives. So he has one remaining. The Rubrikai will smite. Nice. Another smite. It goes off. And it does two mortals into my banner. My banner takes two mortal wounds. He's down to three remaining. Flamer, flex flamer into the banner. Five hits, four is to wound, three wounds. Four up saves. He takes one more damage, down to two remaining. Here come the Terminators, who are they charging? The Dreamerys will charge your banner. <clears throat> they will make it. Three of them, they're gonna fight the banner. Wee. Good job, little banner. You got this. Um, I will be using transhuman physiology for my last command point. Let's see if it saves the banner. That would be cool too. Here we go. The relic. Hang on threes. One oh. hit. That's a wound on a three. No, on a four. Because I'm oh. transhuman. Right. Dose Kopesh's. Threes to hit this time. Fours to wound. Three wounds go through. At AP three goes to AP two. And if I fail any of these, he dies. Five up saves for the banner. No, he does go down. Bap. There's two souls. So we'll now attack, and they will both attack your little guy. And I will use my reroll hits and wounds against you. I'm going to try very hard to kill the little lambs because I want to. Oh, there was one miss in there. Sorry, reroll the miss. Cool. And reroll the wound. Nope, three saves. So I was hitting on fours because of. Glamour. Go. Does he survive? I'm going to. You're going to CP it, of course. <laughs> Just to rub salt in the wound. John is CPing it. Uh, yes. Yes. The little Get man. wrecked. Get out of here. And then they will pile in. Like so. Vortex. Uh, very nice. Hitting on and wounding on threes. One wound. Which I will ignore the fail thanks to my helix. That helix coming in clutch. So that is it for your turn. The R leadership minus two. So eight minus two, six. Um, and they lost two. Mm -hmm. They will hold Ooh. because they are the Space Marines. But with that, that's it. It's on to my turn number five. You did kill my banner before the end of the battle round. I will only get my five banner points before the banner was felled. Uh, and with that, I get zero points on primary. Okay, Guerrilla Tactics is can't let me use it now, so they will just shoot their pistols at your sorcerer. Shooting. Doomed. One armor save. No. And then in combat, your sorcerer gets to fight me first. Hitting three times. Winning on threes. Five up saves. And one ignored, thanks to the 
Helix, good job, Helix. But with that, with that, we're gonna call it game because there's nothing else I can do. The Thousand Sons are victorious in this battle, leaving the Black Templars packing. We'll be back with an after action report. What a valiant defeat for the Black Templars. They were sent packing by the sudden surprise assault of the forces of chaos, Marshal Augustine, and the holy pious brother, Leonard, also falling with the banner. So, out of action tests. Everybody passed their out of action test. However, I have to take a second out of action test for my banner of renown, and it did suffer damage. I rolled for it, and it is now scorched by the forces of chaos, which means uh, it loses its, my, its plus one leadership ability. So now it's just a banner. I also remembered that I completely forgot to use the on a four plus, you can shoot or fight when you die, which was a bit of a sad moment for me. <laughs> but other than that, um, the infiltrators have leveled up. Sigismund's Light, the infiltrators holding till the end of the game have become blooded and they have been bestowed purity seals which will give them a deny they can deny the witch as if they were a psyker death to the psychers out of action test and quick upgrades for the zinch forces the uh little lambs passed their uh their out of action test yep uh ogma just gained one experience right the Rubrikai only gained one experience, and the Dream Marines for Harvesting Souls gained a total of nine experience this game. They are now blooded. They received the Psychic Might Fortitude, so they get one extra cast. Very nice. The Forces of Chaos stand strong this day. In the first battle of Dontoria, the Chaos Forces have gained a foothold in the Hives. The fate of the sector remains in the balance as we continue with this war of faith.